Welcome to Electron Online and now let's talk about interferometry. Another clever technique that we use with telescopes to get a better angle of resolution. Remember the equation that we need is theta, the angle of resolution is equal to uh, let's see 2.5 times 10 to the fifth times the ratio of the wavelength of the light that we look at divided by the diameter of the telescope and of course that would then be in arc seconds when we use this equation in arc seconds. So this equation has been adapted specifically for astronomers and the idea is that you want two things. You want to look at light in the shortest wavelengths possible of course when we take, talk about visible light we only have a range between 400 and 700 nanometers and we also want to have the diameter of the optics on the telescope to be as big as possible. The bigger the better, the larger the, the smaller the angle of resolution which is what you want when you want to see fine detail. So what we do sometimes is we'll take two telescopes at once. The Keck telescopes on top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii at an elevation of 4100 meters above sea level, that's more than 13,000 feet above sea level, we have two telescopes side by side. They're identical, they're kind of like twin telescopes, we call them the twin Keck telescopes, Keck 1 and Keck 2. The mirrors, the reflecting mirrors are 10 meters in diameter, it's enormous in size, and they're 85 meters apart. And the way that works is it works as if you have a single telescope that has a, an aperture or a lens or what we call the objective of 85 meters in diameter. And so instead of using 10 meters as diameter, when we use both of them at the same time, then both of them would be hooked up via computer, a big processing unit, which then would take the two images at the same time that would be trained to the same object, we look at the same object with the two telescopes at the same time, we feed those images into a computer and we process it together. And by doing that, we actually increase the resolution and we can then put 85 down there instead of 10 and have even a smaller angle of resolution. And then if we use adaptive optics to make sure that the images are clear so we don't have to worry too much about the turbulence of the atmosphere, we get very high resolution images. The only drawback is you still only have these collecting areas for the picture so the area is still pi r squared and the di diameter being 10 meters meaning a radius of 5 meters so the total surface area of these two are only twice pi r squared or twice pi times 5 meters squared. Still quite an accomplishment. So the idea is even though we don't have the large collecting areas as if it was one giant telescope we still get the resolution angle which is what we're after. Very very high resolution angle. In some cases we actually have computers that work on different continents at the same time looking at the same image, image linked via computer and the internet processing the images together to have very high resolution. We use that usually for radio telescopes but we could also use it for visual telescopes. Again it's all about sharpness of the image and the angle of resolution. And so that's one way interferometry in which we can take care of that. Radio telescopes have a tremendous ability. We can actually put these large radio telescope antennas on, for example, railroad tracks where we put antennas spaced apart like that and we can move them back and forth in such a way that we actually have a, di a relative diameter that is equal to this distance right there. We have this. So otherwise, radio telescopes have very poor resolution, but by and so by building a system like that we have multiple radio telescopes spaced apart like that in different directions we can kind of mimic one giant radio telescope so interferometry is one of these great techniques that we use to get the best resolution out of the equipment that we have.